so I'm back at work um, and I was walking past uh, the corridor the other day uh, and I realised that I haven't actually got around to uploading the second video on how I painted this chap from over a year ago, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with a nice dark brown base. The um, A lot of the stone on this site is quite uh, orangey, um, or at least that's how it looks in the photos. Yeah, it's quite a nice dark, uh, dark brown colour in there now for me to work on top of. Um, obviously there's not enough in there for me to uh, cover the whole building, but I'm going to dilute it. And it's really important at this stage that you mix up the paint uh, before you start diluting it. Because as I dilute it, I'm going to add a little bit of the PVA glue just to help everything bond together and that will make this paint come out um, quite a bit lighter because of the white colour of the glue but when it dries that white will disappear but this will now modify the the colour of my mix in here if I mix that through that'll make that a bit lighter using quite a large brush here with quite soft uh, end because I want to be just applying the liquid and letting the paint flow over the surface. I don't at this stage want to be forcing anything onto the model. So quite large soft brush there. And I'm going to cover all of the built up areas here. So now we're going to do uh, some of the fun bits and dry brushing and I've got uh, acrylic paints of various types here. These are um, uh, the foundry paint system. Um, these are the, the kind of acrylics that I prefer to use. They're um, model makers um, acrylics. Uh, if you want to use the stuff that comes in tubes, that's fine. You can do. You may need to play with the consistency a bit. These are already uh, mixed up for application straight from um, the pot. Vallejo do a very good range. Their model colour range is very good. Um, these foundry paints are available in a uh, quite a big range. Um, there's lots of different manufacturers out there, um, including the, the normal sort of Airfix um, and Humbrol uh, enamel kits, but I, I'd avoid using the enamels if you can and stick to using the acrylics. They're a lot easier to clean um, and a lot easier to work with. Um, I'm going to do a process called dry brushing. Um, and you would normally do that with a lighter colour, so I've got an assortment of lighter colours here. But I'm going to start off dry brushing some dark areas just to give some variation um, on the base across here. This, this brickwork or this stonework is not totally regular um, all the way across. We want it to look like um, there are different colours, different tones of, of brick and surface in there. So um, I'm going to do some dark areas first. A lot of people will tell you that if you dry brushing, what you want is a, a hard uh, or a stiff, large brush. Um, I prefer to use quite a, a, a um, soft brush. Um, this one's actually quite small because I only want to put the dark areas in very specific areas. But um, when I move on to the lighter colours, I'll get a bigger brush. But I prefer to use a soft brush. Um, it just means that you get less streaky uh, dry brushing and more of an even um, coating. Uh, in fact, some of the best brushes to use are um, the large makeup brushes. So if you go to um, go to Poundland, you'll find that they've got a, a nice selection of very, very cheap, very soft, large brushes that are great for dry brushing. I'm going to put some grey um, into here as well to kind of deaden the tones a little bit. So I'm going to change brushes for these, uh, for the highlights, because um, <clears throat> I don't want to be mixing these colours in um, 
you'll find with uh, dry brushing that you pick up quite a lot of leftover colour from previous um, previous uses, which sometimes that kind of blending is nice, but at other times you want to keep it fairly pure. Um, so for the very bright highlights, I don't want um, that blending to be taking place. I want the highlights to sit on top of the paint that's already there. Um, so once I've done this layer, I'm just going to put that to one side and let it dry off. So that the next line of highlights will be nice and sharp. Got a large soft brush here. Um, so let's start with some light colours. So I've been, uh, I've done the dry brushing on this side and I've been picking out the occasional brick in a darker colour using um, uh, a dark brown and a dark grey and a sort of reddish, uh, this is actually a terracotta colour, um, just to break up the uniformity of these bricks a bit. Uh, and then I've worked out where the water line is going here. This isn't where the uh, where I'm going to pour my water effects up to, but this is the, uh, the sort of height that the water has reached where the brickwork is still damp. Um, and I've done that by applying a, uh, this is a dark tone um, wash. It's essentially um, a, a thin uh, ink, so you could use a, a diluted um, black or uh, mix of black and sepia ink to do the same thing. Um, washed that into the cracks here and then used the dark grey starting from the bottom and brushing and blending with a bit of water upwards um, to give this dark effect here. So I need to do that on uh, on this side. Um, I'm just doing this with a fairly small brush and trying to pick out bricks that aren't too regular so I don't want to um, produce any patterns colouring in the dark bricks. I want to go for ones that are standalone and separate and don't look too regular once they're painted in. Um, I'm using uh, Pro Art brushes. Um, they're a synthetic tipped brush and I find them quite good at keeping their um, keeping their shape. They're also fairly uh, cost effective. So I do recommend using uh, the Pro Art brushes. If you want bigger brushes for doing the dry brushing, I have um, I've mentioned that uh, makeup brushes are, are quite good for doing that. Um, the range also used to do quite a good um, pack of mixed size synthetic brushes um, and although they're not the highest uh, quality the, the tips won't last forever um, for the price they're quite they're quite good value um, and if you're doing lots of dry brushing with them you won't be too worried about whether they're um, holding their tips or not, that's um, that's not what you're going to be looking for. These uh, areas where there's going to be um, grass and lawn, uh, I'm going to start off with just some PVA glue. On a brush, 
and you can if you want colour this sometimes it's good to have some brown coloured um, glue to just prevent the white from showing through but it will be fine in this instance I'm going to start off um, although these are going to look quite neat thorns I'm going to start off by sprinkling uh, a blend of black and green tea and uh, coffee grounds on there so the next stage with this once uh, that's all painted in I'm going to do another uh, light highlight over these cobbles I'm going to paint in the decoration um, on the cobbles around the bridge then I'm gonna put the um, I'm gonna put the, the turf on these areas and um, I'm gonna do that exactly the same way once once this is dry um, I'm gonna get some white glue but this time I'm going to dilute it very slightly so that it flows um, over and into this area uh, and then I'm going to use um, this is sponge scatter. Um, I buy my sponge scatter from um, Model Tree Shop uh, online, and this is C15, which is a mix of a light uh, and a dark um, scatter. They've got a good uh, range of colours, and you can buy them in um, coarse for bushes and fine for um, for turf. And I recommend using the sponge scatter as opposed to um, the sawdust scatter that you can get. I think the uh, the sponge gives a much better turf effect and um, it also absorbs the glue better than the sawdust does. Um, so the sawdust uh, tends to fall off um, a lot easier off the model than the sponge does. So I uh, <clears throat> recommend using that. So that's what I'm going to do. Now I've got the um, baseboard of my model pretty much um, sorted here. I've done the um, second bit of the cobbling um, in here. I haven't quite finished uh, painting the cobblestones on there, but I put the base um, the base on there. Um, I've grasped these areas with um, some sponge flock over the top of the um, coffee and tea mix that I did previously. Um, I've added some trees on the side here. These are um, model tree shop trees. They are better than the um, the Chinese uh, ones that you can buy that are very uh, obviously fake. These have a, a nicely moulded um, trunk to them um, and spread out branches with this um, broken up clump foliage. And model tree shop do a very good uh, range of different um, species so I recommend um, checking those out. I've also done some leaf scatter here at the base um, and I don't know if you can see but I've um, placed little collections of leaf litter lying near to the wall certainly um, along these edges just to, to add a bit of extra um, detailing to it and I've put in this um, grill over the front of this doorway here this is just bits of um, steel wire uh, cut to length and then jabbed down into the um, foam core at the base glued together um, and given a quick uh, dab of um, dark grey paint just to um, hide the shine. I've put blobs of glue along the water line and put some foliage in there um, and I've put, built up some larger clumps of foliage here um, and on this wall using um, stuff called clump foliage. Okay, this is what I've been using here. Um, you can get this from lots of different scenic uh, suppliers for um, model railways and for architectural um, modeling. Um, this one is a bit uh, bright. Uh, it looks fine on the camera, but it's actually in actuality, it's a bit bright. So um, I have uh, put some glue over the top of that and added um, some lighter coloured um, sponge scatter over the top of there and then I've started decorating in uh, the base where the water of the canal is going to be. Now it's important to use plastic at this point not um, 
MDF or a card. Uh, you could use mount board, but you want something that's got a, a plastic surface to it because what I've done with the water base here is blend three different colors together. So put three very wet um, colors down and then blended them in, mixed them in to give variation um, across the water surface. And if you're doing it on an absorbent surface like card or MDF um, or other woods, it's going to dry too quickly, it's going to absorb the paint, you're not going to be able to get that blend. Um, so you want to have um, a nice um, impervious surface here to work over the top of. Um, I'm going to pour a thin layer of um, clear epoxy resin over the top here um, just to give added depth and shine to the water and then I'm going to put some water effects over. So in order to do that I've sealed the edges along here with clear glue just out of the glue gun, very thin bead right along the edge so that it doesn't spread and flow um, underneath my model here. Um, now that's, that is obvious, I can see that it is, let's see if I can get it close to the camera, I don't know if you can see this bead in here, but it's, it's very obvious to the naked eye, but um, the level of my uh, clear water is going to go above that so it will hide that, it will mask that bit there. The other thing that I've done that you can probably see on here is I've put a strip of clear plastic along the front here. This is just a, a piece of um, clear PVC that I've cut from um, a food tray. Uh, so I think this had some tomatoes in this packaging originally, so I've just cut a thin strip of that and taped that so that it's tight across either end here so that when I pour this, the um, the clear resin won't flow out the edges. I'll be able to build up a nice wall at the end here. And it won't stick to this. I'll be able to peel this straight off um, afterwards and it'll leave a nice, clean, um, shiny finish across the edge, which will look pretty nice. Um, <clears throat> there you go, you can see a thickness there. So this is a thickness of poured um, epoxy resin on the top here. That's gone off nicely. You can see, um, if I can hop back to the light, you can still see the painting um, of the bottom board here, the, the color mixing that we did on the board. Um, but I've poured that thickness of quite heavily pigmented resin over the top. So that it's, not, um, it's not immediately obvious that you're looking through to a painted surface. Um, it just kind of blends in with the, um, the coloring of the uh, of the resin. So what I'm going to do now is do some water effects because this is a, a real water feature, it's not totally still. Um, there'll be some ripples, there'll be some movement in it and I'm going to do this using uh, Mod Podge. This is um, a super high gloss um, Mod Podge. Uh, Mod Podge was designed for doing um, decoupage and collage and kind of card art. It's essentially PVA glue, it's a, a PVA medium. Um, but and you can use PVA glue, but the advantage of Mod Podge over um, straight PVA is it's a lot thicker. Um, it dries absolutely clear, whereas the um, PVA dries with a kind of milky sheen to it. Um, and this uh, this one is uh, very, very shiny, very, very gloss, so it gives a good effect. You can uh, get the matte one. It doesn't do water effects quite as well as the gloss one. Um, you can also, if you want to, uh, add a bit of white pigment into this um, to get a bit of froth. I prefer to add that on afterwards, um, but if you want to, you can mix up uh, in this. But because this is white, if you have, add, add in, if you have added any pigment to a batch, um, make sure that your pigmented batch is kept separate from this one. You don't want to mistakenly put that on where you want the uh, clear stuff. You can apply this with a brush, um, but you want to be applying this quite thickly. And what you'll find is if you do it with a brush, um, it's quite easy to get air in it, get bubbling, um, and that doesn't look so great when it's dried. You want to get as few bubbles uh, in this as possible. So I'm going to use um, a tongue depressor coffee stirrer to, um, to detail this. And I'm just going to snap it, in fact, so that I've got a nice sharp edge there, a nice sharp corner um, to be doing the detailing with. So I'll show you how we're going to do that. I've given this a shake, given this a mix through because you want it to be quite nice and thick. 
and I'm going to start detailing that along the edge. Don't worry if it looks like a lot because as I say it dries completely completely clear. And this doesn't take very long to go off in um, in decent weather and decent temperature and you just want to keep doing it keep reiterating where you want your um, ripples to go until they stop collapsing because the um, mod podge has thickened up sufficiently to take that shape you don't want to keep going once the mod podge is really firm because you'll um, just end up with score lines and that won't look natural. You want it to collapse a bit so that you get that kind of soft rippling um, but you don't want it to um, collapse to the extent where you can't see the rippling that you've put in place there. So here's our finished model. I've put um, a bit more bushing in here and with these kind of hedgerows around the sides um, added a bit more shrubbery on the sides here of the uh, building, glued the building in place, added these uh, trees on the side here, blended in the paintwork um, around the sides, uh, added in the little bench uh, on the bridge there. Uh, if I tilt this you can hopefully see the, um, the water effects there are, um, are dried. Um, what I've done with the uh, with the water is that this side, if you remember that I um, was doing the quite tight ripple pattern, um, that's gotten wider this side because the flow is through the bridge. So once it gets through this narrow point here, the ripples start to spread out um, and slow down a bit, whereas they're bunched up quite tight in here. Um, if you look under the bridge, uh, itself you'll see it's quite choppy under here and around the sides and what I've done is when this was almost uh, dry if you remember I put a high build up of um, Mod Podge in the corner here and I just with the flat of the um, tongue depressor have just sort of stippled into that when it was nearly dry to give this kind of choppy effect where it's breaking on the sides here and not adding any whitening um, because this is a, a canal, the water's moving fairly slowly anyway. This is just probably swashed from either wind or boats um, going by. Um, there's not a lot of, um, there's certainly no waves going on here, so there's no kind of cresting. So I'm not putting any white um, in there. I have sprinkled a few um, of the dried leaves uh, in the canal just because they wouldn't stop settling on the side here. They're sort of floating down in the canal as well. Um, and those leaves, I don't think I mentioned last time, um, you can buy these uh, commercially um, leaf litter. Uh, Woodland Scenics do it, and I think Knock do that as well. Um, but you can just as easily use um, actual uh, dried leaves that you've put in a coffee grinder. Um, or uh, mixed dried herbs that you get from the, from the supermarket scattered around can look like um, quite good leaf litter um, as well. Mm -hmm.